Moscow Popular Science Studios. Never say never. This is the story of a discovery. There are several chapters in this story, which began in 1950. This is the first. A chemical compound was being analyzed in the laboratory. It oxidized and changed color as was expected. Suddenly the researchers saw that the oxidized compound had spontaneously undergone reduction, after which the reaction proceeded as before and again reversed. Boris Bilous of the researcher was no newcomer to science. He immediately understood that what he had seen was incredible. After analyzing the reaction for several months, he concluded that this was a phenomenon as yet unknown to science. A periodic, long-term, pulsating reaction has been discovered never previously described, said his report to a chemical journal. The reply dismissed his report with the words that such things never happen in chemistry. realized that even after observing the reaction his opponent would say there is no explanation for this in chemical terms you must look for some other explanation of the oscillations accepted notions are often very persistent even our layman's ideas about chemistry combustion is an ordinary chemical reaction However, who has ever witnessed the sudden reduction of the combustion product? Everything in nature strives to maintain a balance. Snow falls, but does not rise back to the heavens. Oscillations do not arise suddenly for no reason whatsoever. This is logical common sense. But common sense is not enough when we enter a realm still unknown to science. Researchers are stumped by the flow of protoplasm currents inside the body of a mushroom, back and forth. What determines the length of each cycle? Biologists have suggested that this may be due to oscillating chemical reaction. But this hypothesis was rejected as invoking a phenomena impossible in nature. Nevertheless, what dictates the pulsating rhythm of this slime mold as it grows on a rotting stump? The heart of a frog contracts and relaxes uniformly. What helps it to keep its beat? The mystery of such rhythm is the mystery of the processes controlling life itself. Now we turn to a new chapter in our story. The town of Pushchino near Moscow. The inst 15 years after the chemist Belousov observed his bizarre oscillations, two budding scientists started working here. Genrich Ivanitsky, a graduate of a technical college, who later became interested in the automation of biological research, and Valentin Krinsky, a graduate of the Moscow Physical Technical Institute. Their research project was concerned with certain unusual modes of cardiac activity. To begin with, as is usual in physics, they translated their problem into the language of equations and constructed a mathematical model. 
The heart was represented as a set of large number of points with definite properties. In order to make this seem less abstract, we'll attempt to show the properties of such a point. Here is a burner filled with viscous oil, which rises slowly along the asbestos wick. When the wick is soaked, it burns, but not for long since the oil burns out faster than it rises. for the fuel has not yet risen. Now the wick has sufficient energy and the flame will catch. Then the process starts all over again. up several such wicks in a row, the excitation will progress from wick to wick or from point to point in the language of mathematics. As the flame progresses, it leaves behind a zone temporarily incapable of burning. But at the end of the zone, the wicks have been saturated again and they can be lighted one after another. This is a model of what theorists call an active or excitable medium. Such elementary units are distributed on a plane. We observe an interesting effect, regular waves. It is such a medium that mathematicians liken to a heart, also consisting of a multitude of standard elements, that is, excitable cells. computer was programmed to research the mathematical model. It reported that if there is a center of excitation in an active medium, circular waves will issue from it. was a familiar effect. In experiments, the heart of an animal removed from the organism continues contracting for the very reason that it receives commands from a center of excitation situated within the heart tissue. However, another result of the experiment was surprising. If there is inhomogeneity in the medium, the circular wave can be disrupted. It becomes a spiral which destroys the source of these circular waves. Now the spiral itself sends out waves. They in turn are disrupted and many new centers of excitation appear. No one had suspected such effects in an active medium. It is known, however, that sometimes the heart stops functioning normally and palpitates like this, as though showered by contradictory commands from many centers. But no such sources could be found in the heart muscle. Could there be a mistake in the mathematical model? We could start the next third chapter with the words, at that same time and in another place. 
University summer seminars are held here at the bio station on the White Sea. A favorite saying here is never say never. In other words, never reject anything without checking it out first, even the most fantastic hypotheses. The 1960s. At one such seminar, Professor Simon Schnoll got postgraduate Anatoly Zhavatsinsky and student Albert Zeichen interested in Belousev's incomprehensible pulsating reaction. After many years, the researcher finally published a paper about it in a journal with a very modest circulation and not widely known to chemists. It was Schnoll who had convinced Belousov to publish the paper because he felt it was important to document the discovery and establish his priority. Zabatinsky and Zaikin carried out their first experiments in the university's physics department and continued their research in Pushchino at the Institute of Biological Physics. Their notes trace their achievements and failures, joyous discoveries, and bitter dead ends. They were greatly helped by the Institute's regular seminars on oscillating processes. The subject was becoming a major one in biology. Success, a discovery of something that Belousov's opponents never suspected existed. They found that the reaction was not like a match that burns only once, but like a wick capable of being lighted again and again, with the sole difference that the wick is fed by oil, but here energy stored in the substance itself is utilized cycle after cycle. The solution behaved like an elementary point in an excitable medium. This prompted the lucky idea of distributing it in a thin layer over a flat surface. It seems the picture drawn by the computer in its research of a theoretically active medium has come to life. But that was a speculative diagram, while this is reality. What was most surprising was that the solution produced its own sources of excitation. The medium itself produced the spark from which issued self-sustaining waves, or as they would soon be named, auto waves. These waves caused synchronized changes in millions of molecules, creating a distinct pattern of moving rings. At the request of the authors of the mathematical model, the homogeneity of the solution in a small sector was upset, and the circular auto wave was indeed disrupted and spirals started forming. multiplied, producing ever new centers of excitation. The identity of the mathematical forecast and the experimental picture was astounding. But nature is a single whole, and it is doubtful that auto waves exist only in chemistry. The Institute continued its search of unusual sources of excitation in the heart tissue. By this time, the scientists had designed special recording devices for their complex research. Such sensitive probes must register the passage of auto waves through a strip of heart tissue and inform the computer of this. analyzes all the data and shows the results on a display. 
The probes lowered onto the strip of the heart will follow such radio lines. The first bright points signal that the probes have discovered an excitation wave. The probes move to another position and again signal where auto waves have been detected. Front after front, instant moments of the process have been captured. Now it is possible to visualize what is hidden behind these lines. A spiral is a decayed circular wave. This proved that auto waves exist not only in chemical reactions but also in living matter and that this is apparently a universal property of all matter. This was a discovery. What happened afterward is what often happens when established views collapse. Many researchers started discovering various types of auto waves in the world around them. They were discovered in the plasma raging in the sun and tamed in nuclear reactors. Auto waves were discovered in the working fluids of lasers. They regulate complicated processes in the retina of the eye and in the neuron networks of the brain. In live mechanisms, the movement of auto waves is quite apparent. Active wave processes play a key role in the life cycle of Nyxomycetes, highly original organisms at times exactly like mushrooms. Like those of mushrooms, their spores too are carried by the wind. Deposited on rotting wood, the spores become unicellular creatures resembling amoebas, and in this state they can exist for many generations. However, their food supply is gradually exhausted and they are in danger of perishing. In such cases, the amoeba releases a special substance and auto waves arise in the medium, helping the mass of unicellular creatures to concentrate around the emerging centers. This dark formation is made up of hundreds of amoebas, which join together forming the fruit body or thalamium. The same auto wave process also forms the stalk, projecting the thalamium upward and making the myxomycetes resemble mushrooms. Waves are found wherever there is self-organization of organic or inorganic matter at the most differing levels. Could it be auto waves that form the mysterious spirals of galaxies out of gigantic clouds of gases, bringing order to chaos, and in these spiral waves creating new stars and planets? in these spiral density waves. This is still a hypothetical possibility, possibly never to be substantiated. But can we afford to say never? The early 1980s, for discovering new natural phenomena, five Soviet scientists were awarded the Lenin Prize. They were Albert Zaikin, candidate of physics and mathematics, Genrich Ivanitsky, corresponding member of the USSR Academy of Sciences, Dr. Anatoly Zobatinsky, Dr. Valentin Krinsky, and the scientist Boris Belousov, who began the research on this problem. Script, Vladimir Bilchinsky. Direction and camera, Yevgeny Pokrovsky.